So previously, in the previous videos, I've talked about how Ethernet originally came out with just a single speed and a single duplex, basically 2.94 megabits per second and half duplex. But over time, Ethernet speeds have greatly increased, and Ethernet duplex also changed from half duplex to full duplex, where in today's modern networks, if you have your laptop or PC directly connected to a switch, which most people do, now you can do full duplex operation, meaning that you can transmit bits to the switch at the exact same time it's transmitting bits to you, which means that you don't have to do CSMA CD anymore. So a couple of decades ago, Ethernet adapters started coming out that were what were called dual speed adapters. They could do 10 megabit per second or fast Ethernet, 100 megabits per second. And now we have triple speed adapters that can do 10, 100, 1000 Ethernet. And also these adapters were capable of either doing half duplex or full duplex. So someone thought, you know what? We should come up with some way that when you plug in your Ethernet cable and that cable's plugged into two different things, they can negotiate between each other the fastest speed and the best duplex that they support. Hence, auto negotiation came into play. So auto negotiation falls originally when it was first developed under the 802.3U specification under the clause 28 section. And here's how auto negotiation basically worked. So before auto negotiation existed, back in the days of just 10 megabit per second ethernet, old style ethernet. What would happen is as soon as you plugged in the cable to either end, the NIC card connected to that cable would start sending out a little pulse, a little heartbeat. It was just a single electrical pulse every few milliseconds. Uh, it was every 16 milliseconds this pulse would go out. And that was called a normal link pulse or an NLP. So if I had uh, my 10 megabit per second PC connected to a 10 megabit per second switch, when my green light came on, when my green LED came on on my NIC card, that's because my NIC card was receiving these normal link pulses every 10 milliseconds. Then when fast Ethernet came out, they instead started sending out 16 of these pulses every 16 milliseconds. So every 16 milliseconds, they're saying, bah, 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 right? These 16, this was called a fast link pulse burst. A fast link pulse burst. And then the 802.3U work group, they said, you know what? Why don't we make use of this existing thing called a fast link pulse burst and actually give it meaning above and beyond a simple heartbeat? Let's turn this thing into what's called an auto negotiation message. And so now every single bit within that fast link pulse, whether it's set to a zero or a one, will actually indicate what the supported speeds are, what the supported capabilities are, if there's any faults, if we're doing flow control using layer two pause frames. So now this auto negotiation message was developed and it was based off of this existing 16 bit sort of pulse called the fast link pulse burst. Auto negotiation these days is on pretty much everything. So any NIC card you get on a laptop or a PC or a router or a switch is most likely at minimum going to be a 10-100 NIC card capable of 10 or 100. Many of them these days are 10-100-1000. And how they are able to negotiate is by sending out this fast link pulse message. And you can see here, here's an example of the 16 bits where you can see the first uh, five bits are reserved of 0001. And then the remaining spaces can indicate what kind of speed and what kind of duplex you can do. Now, this is the original auto negotiation message that was 16 bits long. If you're using a gigabit adapter, it's actually bigger than this. It actually utilizes that 15th bit there, that one on the far right, setting that to a one, which means there's another page, there's a next page present, which means there's more auto negotiation bits to follow. So when your NIC card first comes up, it sends this, and then it should get within a maximum of sending three of these, it should get an acknowledgement back, meaning it should get an auto negotiation message back from the peer with the acknowledgement bit set, acknowledging what supported speeds and duplexes your peer is capable of doing. And then based on that, you can negotiate to the highest speed 
and the best duplex. Now, when auto negotiation first was developed, and this was a while ago, this is like 20 plus years ago, probably. In, when it was in its infancy, it wasn't necessarily all that stable. And the thing with auto negotiation was if you had two devices, like for example, let's say that you had a switch that was capable of auto negotiation connected to an older NIC card on a server. And that server did not support auto negotiation. Now let's say that NIC card in the server was a fast ethernet NIC card. So all it could do was fast ethernet, 100 megabits, 100 megabits per second. And it was capable of full duplex or half duplex, but you had to set that manually. So you think to yourself, oh, okay, well on my server, I'm gonna manually set it for full duplex because after all, it's connecting to a switch. Shouldn't be a problem. Well, here's the problem that you would run into. You plug it into the switch. The switch starts sending out its auto negotiation message. What's it getting back from the server? It's getting back just a regular fast link pulse burst, basically a pulse of like all zeros or all ones. I'm not sure which one it was, but it, it wasn't this combination of ones and zeros. It's like 16 pulses all looking the same. So the switch said, huh, okay, well, based on the fact that I got 16 of those pulses and based on sort of the electrical energy used in the signal and the encoding, I know that what I'm connected to is a fast ethernet device. So the switch said, even though I can do 10 and 100, I know I should be doing 100 because if that device I'm connected to was only a 10 megabit NIC card, I would have only gotten a single pulse, a single normal link pulse. And that's not what I received. So I can all, I can, the switch says I can figure out the speed. I got the speed nailed down. He's doing 100. Great. But that device I'm connected to, I don't know what it is. I know it's a NIC card capable of fast Ethernet, but is it a NIC card in a laptop, in a PC, in a hub, another switch? No idea. And that device I'm connected to isn't telling me what duplex it can do. So the auto negotiation device would say, hmm, since he's not telling me, I'm just going to play it safe and I'm gonna go down to half duplex. And so in the early days of auto negotiation when it first came out, you would see a lot of white papers and documents that would say, oh, just turn it off. Statically hard code your speed and your duplex on both sides, because if you don't do that, you might end up with a situation where you get half duplex instead of full duplex, and that's not what you want. But these days, here we are, you know, 20 plus years later, auto negotiation is very stable, it's on everything and you don't have to worry about it. it. It just works. So this is one of those things that just works in the background. But if you're like me and you're wondering, okay, well, how does my NIC card know what speed it should select or what duplex it should select? It's because of this. It's because of auto negotiation. And that concludes this particular video on auto negotiation. In the next video, we're going to talk about the Ethernet frame structure.